the the European Center for Nuclear Research, right. which is acronymed out at CERN. CERN. And so you say, whoa, we can do this. We can probe nice. the, the Big Bang itself, giving us a little taste of the origin of the universe in our backyard. CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, is an intergovernmental organization dedicated to pushing the boundaries of scientific knowledge in the field of particle physics. And well, it's done it again. Neil deGrasse Tyson has just unveiled that CERN has closed down and something weird is happening. Join us as we uncover the truth about what's really going on at CERN and how these secret discoveries might just change the way we've looked at scientific research forever. While scientific research has been going on for centuries now, albeit in its own way, CERN has taken things to the next level. This particular facility was founded in 1954 and is located near Geneva, Switzerland right at the border with France. Even though this facility gets up to a lot, one of CERN's primary functions is to operate the world's largest particle physics laboratory. It serves as a hub for international collaboration, bringing together scientists and researchers from around the globe to explore the fundamental structure of the universe. So you could say that at the core of CERN's research are particle accelerators. They are colossal machines that propel particles to incredibly high speeds these accelerators are designed to recreate the conditions that existed just moments after the Big Bang, so scientists can study the fundamental building blocks of matter and how it works together to create the universe we know. One of the biggest accomplishments of the CERN facility as a whole is its collaborative nature. It's created an environment that fosters international cooperation among scientists. It comprises 23 member states, predominantly from Europe, although Israel is the only non-European member. Scientists from member and non-member countries work side by side, sharing knowledge, expertise, and resources to advance the frontiers of science. So if a facility this important and strong is to close down, something massive has got to have happened. And it's likely that it happened to the Large Hadron Collider. This is an enormous machine that was constructed by CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It took a collaborative effort involving over 10,000 scientists numerous universities, laboratories, and more than 100 countries to build it. All of these people got together and created something extraordinary. The LHC holds the title of being the largest and most powerful particle collider in the world. It had the capability to accelerate beams of particles to extremely high energies. This means that the LHC can make particles move at speeds very close to the speed of light. By reaching such high energies, the particles gain a tremendous amount of kinetic energy enabling scientists to explore the fundamental nature of matter and the universe. Once these particle beams are accelerated in the LHC, they are then guided to collide with each other or with stationary targets, hence the name collider. These collisions occur at specific points within the LHC's detectors. The detectors are sophisticated instruments designed to capture and record the particles produced by these collisions. During the collisions, lots of different types of particles are created and their properties are carefully observed and analyzed. Scientists study the characteristics of these particles to better understand their behavior, interactions, and the underlying physical laws that govern them. With the entire process of observing and recording the results of these collisions, the LHC experiments contribute to our understanding of particle physics. The data collected from the collisions are analyzed to search for new particles, study their properties, and test theories that describe the fundamental nature of the universe. And for all of this to happen, the collider needs to be built just right. It is built in an underground tunnel that forms a circular shape with a circumference of about 17 miles. This tunnel is located as deep as 574 feet beneath the surface, so it's able to do its thing in peace without being disturbed by anything that may be going on the ground level. What the LHC primarily does is accelerate particles to extremely high energies. It serves as a particle accelerator, propelling particles, such as protons, to nearly the speed of light. By doing so, scientists can create collisions between these accelerated particles, allowing them to investigate the properties and behavior of matter at very small scales. One of the primary purposes of the Large Hadron Collider is to study the standard model of particle physics. The standard model is a theory that describes the fundamental particles and their interactions. 
When you do study particles and matter at their very core, you can learn a lot more about them than you could from a book or a theoretical experiment. Not only that, but the LHC is also utilized to search for phenomena that go beyond the predictions of the standard model. Scientists are particularly interested in exploring concepts like supersymmetry, extra dimensions, and other theories that could potentially expand our understanding of particle physics. Supersymmetry is a theoretical framework that suggests a symmetry between two fundamental classes of particles, bosons and fermions. According to the standard model, bosons are particles that carry forces like photons, while fermions are the building blocks of matter like electrons and quarks. Supersymmetry proposes that for each known particle in the standard model, there exists a corresponding superpartner particle with different spin properties. For example, the superpartner of a fermion would be a boson, and vice versa. These superpartners have not yet been observed, but their existence could help address certain unanswered questions in physics. One major motivation for supersymmetry is its potential to explain the nature of dark matter. Dark matter is a mysterious form of matter that doesn't interact with light or other electromagnetic forces, making it invisible to our current detection methods. Supersymmetry provides a possible candidate for dark matter in the form of the lightest supersymmetric particle, which would be stable and weakly interacting. Another issue that supersymmetry could help resolve is the hierarchy problem. This problem arises from the large disparity in the strength of different fundamental forces, such as gravity being extremely weak compared to the other forces. Supersymmetry introduces additional interactions between particles, which could contribute to canceling out certain quantum corrections and stabilize the hierarchy of forces. But that's not the only thing here. With dark matter, we also have the concept of more dimensions. Our everyday experience involves three spatial dimensions, length, width, and height. But some theories propose the existence of additional spatial dimensions beyond these three. These extra dimensions are compactified or curled up in such a way that they're not directly observable in our macroscopic world, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Extra dimensions have been suggested by theories like string theory and some variants of quantum gravity. These theories propose that the universe may have more than three spatial dimensions, but the extra dimensions are hidden at extremely small scales. The LHC experiments aim to search for possible signatures of extra dimensions by examining the particles and their interactions at high energies. One possibility is that the graviton, a hypothetical particle associated with gravity, could leak into these extra dimensions, resulting in observable effects in the LHC experiments. Scientists are particularly interested in deviations from the predictions of the standard model that could indicate the presence of extra dimensions. Deviations like this might manifest as unexpected patterns in particle collisions or the production of new particles that don't really fit within the three-dimensional framework of the standard model. But how does the collider even do all of it? Well, a lot goes into it. The Large Hadron Collider basically works with four main detectors inside it, ATLAS, CMS, LHCB, and ALICE. Each of these detectors has a specific purpose and is designed to investigate different aspects of particle physics. ATLAS and CMS are general-purpose detectors that are versatile and capable of studying a wide range of physics phenomena. They are designed to capture and analyze the particles produced by collisions in the LHC. These detectors provide comprehensive measurements of the particles' properties, such as their momentum, energy, and direction. Scientists utilize the data collected by ATLAS and CMS to search for new particles, explore the fundamental forces and particles of nature, and test various theories. LHCB, on the other hand, is a specialized detector dedicated to studying the subtle differences between matter and antimatter. Antimatter is essentially the mirror image of matter, with particles having opposite charges. The LHCB detector is designed to precisely measure the properties of particles and their antimatter counterparts, enabling scientists to investigate why our universe is predominantly made up of matter and why antimatter is scarce. ALICE, the fourth detector, is specifically designed to explore the properties of a unique state of matter called quark-gluon plasma. This state of matter is believed to have existed shortly after the Big Bang, when the universe was extremely hot and dense. ALICE helps recreate these extreme conditions by colliding with heavy ions like lead nuclei and studying the behavior of quarks and gluons, which are the building blocks of protons, neutrons, and other particles. By studying quark-gluon plasma, scientists aim to better understand the early universe, 
and the conditions that prevailed during its formation. We need to learn more about the way the early universe formed and how it turned into what it is today. The way the LHC works allows scientists to learn about every aspect of matter. Studying matter under extreme temperature and density conditions helps us get answers about the nature of particles and how they function. This is why scientists working on these projects figured out the perfect way to recreate the conditions right after the Big Bang with the LHC, so getting to the root of these questions becomes that much easier. During the early stages of the universe, the temperature and density were incredibly high. So, by replicating these extreme conditions in experiments, scientists can observe how particles interact and understand the fundamental laws that govern their behavior. This research helps us uncover the underlying principles that shape the behavior of matter and energy at the most fundamental level. By studying matter under extreme conditions, scientists can explore phenomena such as phase transitions, where matter transforms from one state to another. These transitions can provide insights into how the early universe evolved and how galaxies, stars, planets, and other cosmic structures formed. Understanding these processes helps us comprehend the actual evolution of the universe over billions of years. Studying matter under extreme conditions is crucial for understanding the conditions required for life to emerge. As they learn more and more about the properties of matter at high temperatures and densities, scientists can explore the chemical reactions and physical processes that could have played a role in the development of life as we know it. It allows us to understand the conditions necessary for the formation of complex molecules and the potential for life-sustaining environments in the universe. Dark matter is another area that researchers want to learn more about. It's a component of the universe that presents one of the biggest mysteries in modern physics. While it is thought to account for a significant portion of the matter in the universe, its nature remains elusive because it does not interact with light or other electromagnetic forces. This means that it can't be directly observed using traditional detection methods. So we have to get creative, although at first you might think that studying something like that might be a waste of time. It's not. Understanding dark matter is crucial because it plays a fundamental role in the structure and evolution of galaxies, as well as the large-scale distribution of matter in the universe. The gravitational influence of dark matter shapes the formation of galaxies, galaxy clusters, and other cosmic structures. It provides the gravitational scaffolding that allows galaxies to form and maintain their observed structures. By searching for dark matter and studying its properties using experiments like the LHC, Scientists aim to uncover its true nature. Detecting and understanding dark matter would have profound implications for our understanding of the universe's composition, its history, and the underlying physics that govern it. The study of dark matter often goes hand in hand with the search for other new phenomena because exploring high energy collisions and probing for unexpected results can reveal new particles, forces, or phenomena beyond our current understanding. Experiments at the LHC are designed to explore the fundamental nature of matter and energy, pushing the boundaries of our knowledge. These experiments have the potential to make discoveries that revolutionize our understanding of physics and have far-reaching implications in various fields such as energy, technology, and medicine. So with all the information, scientists hope to deepen our understanding of the fundamental laws of the universe uncover new particles or forces, and potentially unlock new technologies and applications that can benefit society as a whole. But along with that, understanding the origins of the universe and the events that occurred during the Big Bang is a fundamental quest in cosmology and physics. Scientists aim to uncover the processes that led to the formation of galaxies, stars, and other cosmic structures by studying the early universe. Experiments like the LHC contribute to our understanding of the origins of the universe by providing insights into the conditions that prevailed during the Big Bang. Through the process of recreating and studying extreme conditions similar to those that existed in the early universe, scientists can gain valuable information about the fundamental principles that govern the cosmos. They can investigate questions about the nature of space-time, the fabric of the universe in which all matter and energy exist, by probing the properties of particles and their interactions at high energies, experiments at the LHC contribute to our understanding of the fundamental nature of space-time and its behavior under extreme conditions. You know, without us in that space actually having to go through the process ourselves, the Large Hadron Collider has made waves in the world of science, one step at a time with the discoveries it's made, going beyond the things we've just talked about. One of the most iconic ones being the Higgs boson, 
The Higgs boson, proposed in 1964 by Peter Higgs, Francois Englert, and other theorists, is a subatomic particle that plays a fundamental role in explaining why certain particles have mass. It's a crucial component of the standard model of particle physics, which describes the behavior of most known particles. The Higgs boson was discovered in 2012 through the ATLAS and CMS experiments conducted at the Large Hadron Collider. This discovery marked a significant milestone in particle physics and was a result of decades of theoretical work and experimental efforts. The Higgs boson is closely connected to the Higgs field, a field that fills all of space. The presence of the Higgs field is responsible for the mass of particles. As particles move through the Higgs field, they interact and acquire mass. The Higgs boson is the quantum application of this field, and its discovery confirmed the existence of the Higgs field and provided experimental evidence for the mechanism of mass generation. This discovery didn't just present itself. Scientists had to dig through the data collected from the collisions by the ATLAS and CMS detectors at the LHC and meticulously analyze it ultimately leading to the announcement of the discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012. Coordinated motion is another phenomenon observed in the Large Hadron Collider where particles in a beam move in a synchronized and connected manner. This intriguing behavior has been studied in the context of the LHC's collisions between beams of protons accelerated to velocities approaching the speed of light. When coordinated motion occurs, the particles in the beam exhibit a collective behavior similar to being connected by an invisible spring. This means that their movements are interdependent and coordinated, creating a display of synchronized motion. Coordinated motion is a rare phenomenon that arises under specific conditions. This is why it's such a big deal that it's been observed during proton-proton collisions in the LHC. Scientists study coordinated motion in the LHC to gain insights into the behavior of particles in a beam and to enhance the performance and efficiency of the collider. Understanding coordinated motion is a complex scientific endeavor that is still being explored. It is considered an example of emergent behavior, where the collective behavior of a complex system cannot be predicted from the behavior of its individual components alone. The study of coordinated motion is an active area of research in particle physics, as it has important implications for the design and operation of particle accelerators like the LHC. Coordinated motion is just one of the many fascinating phenomena studied in the LHC, which stands as a remarkable scientific achievement at the forefront of particle physics research. The exploration of coordinated motion and other phenomena in the LHC opens doors to new scientific discoveries. It allows scientists to delve deeper into the behavior of particles in a beam and can potentially uncover new insights about the fundamental nature of matter and the universe. Beyond its scientific implications, coordinated motion exemplifies complexity of the natural world. It serves as a testament to the power of scientific studies and the ability of science to unravel the secrets of nature, revealing phenomena that can easily highlight the interconnectedness of the intricate fabric of the universe, even though that's not something we can always physically see. But CERN's research isn't limited to the LHC alone. There are also pin-offs resulting from the research at CERN, and one of them is the gas electron multiplier. Originally developed as a specialized gas detector for high-energy physics experiments, the GEM technology has found widespread adoption in various fields beyond particle physics. The GEM detector, patented by CERN, operates by amplifying the electrical signals produced by charged particles passing through a gas-filled chamber. This innovative technology has proven to be highly versatile and has been utilized in diverse applications. One variant of the GEM detector is the optical readout, this particular configuration of the GEM technology is tailored for online dose imaging in hadron therapy. Hadron therapy, a form of radiation therapy, utilizes beams of charged particles to treat cancer. The optical readout GEM enables real-time imaging of the dose delivery, allowing for precise monitoring and adjustment during treatment. Another variant of the GEM detector is the GEM PIX detector, which finds applications in conventional radiotherapy. This variant of the GEM technology has been employed for radiation therapy dosimetry, aiding in accurately measuring and monitoring the radiation doses delivered to patients. The adoption of GEM technology extends far beyond the medical field. It has been utilized in biotechnology for applications such as material analysis, where it enables precise detection and analysis of particles in radiation. Plus, GEM detectors have been employed in radiation detection monitoring, allowing for the reliable measurement and monitoring of radiation levels in various environments. 
Even in astrophysics, gem detectors have found application in space-based experiments for studying cosmic radiation. Another significant spin-off from CERN here is the hybrid pixelated detector, which has applications in various scientific and industrial fields. Amsterdam Scientific Instruments in particular has been actively involved in developing and advancing this technology. It's already on its third license from CERN to continue its development. The collaboration between ASI and CERN is highly valued and receiving the license from CERN marks an important milestone in their ongoing partnership. Hans Brouwer, the CEO of ASI, expressed pride in being a commercialization partner of CERN for Medipix technology. The license signifies a significant step forward in their fruitful collaboration, reflecting their joint efforts in advancing the hybrid pixelated detector technology. By leveraging the expertise and resources of CERN, ASI has been able to further develop and refine the hybrid pixelated detector technology. This progress opens up new possibilities for its application in various scientific and industrial domains. The technology's versatility makes it suitable for fields such as medical imaging, material analysis, and particle physics research. The hybrid pixelated detector technology offers high-resolution imaging capabilities and precise particle tracking. Its commercialization potential holds promise for advancing fields like X-ray imaging, electron microscopy, and particle track reconstruction. The technology's integration into ASI's next-generation pixel cameras paves the way for enhanced performance and expanded applications in these areas. A Belgian company, Magix, has obtained a license from CERN to develop a radiation-tolerant chip for use in nuclear and space environments. The chip in question is a specially designed 10 watts synchronous step-down buck DC to DC converter chip. Magix specializes in the design of radiation-hardened integrated circuits and recognizes the potential of the CERN technology for its product line. In collaboration with CERN, Magix will work to incorporate these chips into digital sensor networks, particularly in rad-hard sensor Internet of Things networks. With the use of the radiation-tolerant properties of the CERN-developed chip, Magix aims to enhance the reliability and performance of its products in demanding environments, such as nuclear and space applications. This isn't just something we'd want to learn more about, it can also transform the way scientific research works as we know it. And on that note, we'll wrap up today's video. With all the things CERN has already achieved with the LHC and beyond, do you think it might just be the one place that brings us answers to all of the scientific questions that we ask today? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and like always, we'll see you in the next one.